Praise the Lord. Welcome back, saints and seekers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining me. We are reading the book of Romans, and it's all about being justified by faith. But as we go into chapter 9, uh, Paul is discussing the righteousness of God and that God is God and what he purposes, what he decides, who are we to question it? He, he reminds us that we, God's like the potter and we are the clay. Can the clay really question God? And it's interesting, he does bring out some things that I, I probably did question in my heart. God about why why did God do that why is that is that quite fair I can remember thinking that about something we're going to have in here but Paul is saying Paul's actually addressing that thing because I'm probably not the only one who has questioned it but reminding us that God is God and he has a big sovereign plan that um, he does insert in all these worldly events and he wants everyone to know he is God. So we are the vessels that he uses. And we have got to learn to be true servants of the God Most High. Praise God. And, uh, you know, once that you realize that God is for us and not against us, that God is love, he is a severe God as well. But for those who choose him, choose righteousness, uh, we have, he has a good plan for us, and he's a good father. He's a good, good father. We can trust the Lord. Well, let's read chapter 9. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Lord, in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. So Paul is just expressing he, he loves the Jewish people. He is one. And uh, he loves everything that pertained to them and the law given. But Christ has come. And he is pointing the direction to Jesus Christ. Verse 4 who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises, whose are the fathers and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all. God bless forever. Amen. Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Neither, because they are the seed of Abraham, are they all children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. So, Isaac was born to Abraham and Sarah, and um, Ishmael was born to Abraham and a handmaid, Hagar, so considered of the flesh. But the one that is uh, children of God comes out of the seed of Abraham and Sarah and Isaac, their son. Verse 9, For this is the word of promise at this time, will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by her father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. So, you know, <coughs> the eldest child usually received the blessing, but God is using this when uh, we have Jacob and Esau. We see how he shows his, that his purpose according to election rather than works. 
So we're not going to put God in a box here. Uh, he is God and he makes the decisions. Verse 13, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. And that does make us uncomfortable. Uh, it, there is a, a predestination thing here going on. Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. And it makes us wonder, where do we stand with the Lord? Well, in Jesus Christ, he said, whosoever will come to him, you can be adopted into the family of God. Praise God. Verse 15, for he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that run runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. So this was something I used to have trouble with in reading the word of God when he would harden Pharaoh's heart. But he's explaining in Romans, why he was doing that. He raised Pharaoh up for a purpose. He raised him up that he might show his power in thee and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. So God was showing who he was. And you know, we're just living in times where he's letting the wicked expose themselves and uh, God is moving. His spirit is mighty and he will show who he is. The heathen will exalt God. They will exalt God. And God is not mocked. He is God. Verse 18. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay, but, O man, who art thou? that repliest against God. Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? Well, let's, let's think about that scripture right there because I very much think that is what is happening in our world right now. Why we are not seeing the boom being lowered completely on the wickedness in this world. Let's read it again, verse 22. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath, fitted to destruction and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had afore prepared unto glory even us whom he hath called not of the Jews only but also of the Gentiles as he saith also in Osi I will call them my people which were not my people and her beloved which was not beloved and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel, Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. And as Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabaoth had left us a seed, we had been as Sodoma and been made like unto Gomorrah. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, 
but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Well, who is that rock of offense? Is Jesus Christ. They stumbled at it. They could not see it. And uh, they had the scriptures to show who he was. But uh, just like today, uh, many people call themselves Christians, but they're not reading the word and going to the word. They're listening to others. They're following their own reasoning about things. And that's just not what we can do. If we're going to discern the times we're in, we're going to have to know what the Word says concerning those times and uh, go back and revisit. We revisit a lot of particular scriptures. There's scriptures in Daniel about the end times and scriptures about wars in Ezekiel and Matthew 24, Jesus answering the disciples' questions about the end and the things that would be happening in end times. Revelation, all of that revealed to John about terrible things that would come when the wrath of God is poured out in final end times. So we can read about it, we can be up on it. Uh, a lot of times we feel like we need others to guide us and lead us, but the Lord is very much saying to us, be led by his spirit, know the word. He wants everyone reading his word, so we need to read it. It's fine for us to read together. It is. Uh, he has uh, given a five-fold ministry to train us up, but we are in end-time deception. So many teachers, many prophets, and you need discernment to make sure that those you sit under are lining up with the Word of God, and you know that because you're opening the Word, you're reading it. You aren't just uh, taking in what someone says it says. You are reading and knowing the Word of God so that you have that check in your spirit when something is spoken as of thus saith the Lord, and it doesn't line up with the word. It's not from God if it doesn't line up with the word. His word is forever settled. Praise God. I love the Lord so much. Uh, we just need to draw so near to him right now, and uh, that's, that's our safe place. And in a world that's uh, getting chaotic out there, we all want a safe place. I had texted a former pastor friend that I'm so glad that the Lord doesn't slumber so that I can just be in repose and rest in him <laughs> because God's got it. He's taking care of this storm out there and uh, we're like in Psalm 91. We're under his wings and we need to stay there. So just like that mother hen, she sees a little problem happening those little chicks come running under her wing she is going to protect them and that's who our heavenly father is he is our protector and we can count on him well i love you jesus loves you more be blessed <laughs>